Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The U.S. Navy is primarily tasked with performing various strategic missions at sea. However, there are many instances in which crew members or U.S. Marines must go ashore, often into direct combat. After decades of relying on various landing craft, the Marine Corps introduced the amphibious assault vehicle in the mid-1950s. These armored troop movers are part boat and part tank with an array of capabilities designed to keep troops safe during various missions. However, even the most modern version, the AAVP-7A1, has a concise range and cannot be deployed independently. That's where the amphibious transport dock comes in. These specialized vessels feature what's known as a well deck. Located at sea level and can be flooded for easy launch and recovery, well decks are integral to deploying boats, landing craft, and other vehicles while in the middle of the sea. While amphibious transport dock vessels like the USS Denver are specifically built around their well deck operations, these decks are also massive, with WASP-class vessels boasting a 266-foot by 50-foot space in which to store and deploy amphibious assault. When not actively being used for this purpose, these decks can be used for a variety of different exercises, including allowing crew members to practice deploying rubber raiding boats. Most well decks open outward, allowing the section of the ship concealing the deck to become a makeshift ramp. This ensures that any vehicle entering or exiting the deck can do so easily and without damaging either vessel. Another important operation performed aboard amphibious transport dock vessels is what's known as AAV Splash and Recovery. This is when an amphibious assault vehicle is deployed for a short time before returning back into the vessel. The exercise can be performed near shore or in the middle of the ocean, but the goal is to keep both the well deck crews and the AAV crews mission ready. This is important because amphibious assault vehicles are integral to many different missions. As they can only move about 8 miles per hour in the water, it is imperative that they can deploy quickly and effectively so as not to present an easy target for the enemy. Fortunately, upon reaching the shore, these heavily armored vehicles can move at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, allowing them to quickly and efficiently engage any threats. Of course, AAVs are not the only option naval vessels have for deploying troops to shore. Since 1986, the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps have had access to special landing craft air cushion vehicles, or LCACs. 
These are essentially military hovercraft designed to operate on land and at sea. For that reason, they solve many of the problems associated with the AAV. For instance, they can operate much faster in the water, reaching speeds of up to 46 miles per hour, even with a full complement of cargo. Not only can they maneuver in and out of the well deck more easily, but they can come ashore at much greater speeds, entering potentially dangerous situations without adjusting to the change in terrain. And while many assume that hovercraft are vulnerable to gunfire due to their large air cushion, this is not the case. These skirts do not function like a balloon, but simply serve to direct the air downward. On top of that, these vehicles do not set off mines and or other defense ordnance as they put almost no pressure on the surface when moving across. LCACs are extremely versatile vehicles. However, they are also very large. At 87 feet long and 47 feet wide, the vehicle can carry up to 60 tons at once, including multiple Humvees, AAVs, troops, and more. The frame has two weapon mounts for defense. These can be outfitted with everything from machine guns and Gatling guns to grenade and missile launchers. Upon coming ashore, the LCAC can immediately reverse its orientation and shut down its air cushion. From there, it can drop its rear ramp, allowing vehicles to drive off or, in the case of equipment deliveries, be removed by shore based troops. The LCAC's incredible speed and maneuverability make it the ideal option for transporting materials from ship to shore and back again, especially when time is a factor. Since its inception in 1983, the LCAC was pretty much invented to work hand in hand with the Marine Corps and be the premier ship to shore uh, connector for the Marine Corps personnel and their equipment. The benefits of an LCAC is the ability to have a Marine step foot on a dry LCAC in the well deck, transit over the water, and step off with their boots dry onto a beach to move forward uh, with whatever their objective is inland. The other benefit is speed. The LCAC is uh, rated to go a top speed of 50 knots, and each knot uh, equates to 1.2 statute miles per hour. Uh, so it goes very quickly. In recent years, the military has invested a lot of time and money into new hovercraft-based projects. Known as the Ship to Shore Connector, this heavy-duty vehicle will provide additional capacity to suit the military's increasing use of heavy equipment and munitions. While the design will closely mirror the original LCAC, the SSC will incorporate a fly-by-wire cockpit, more powerful engines, and a better prepared frame to deal with sea salt corrosion. It's estimated that the SSC will be able to carry around 74 tons of equipment, or 145 Marines, while still traveling at speeds exceeding 40 miles per hour. So far, only a prototype has been constructed. Marines regularly train with amphibious assault vehicles often mimicking the famous D-Day storming of the beaches at Normandy. 
Multiple vehicles perform a training exercise at Kanaohe Marine Corps Base in Hawaii. This simulation is part of RIMPAC, or the Rim of the Pacific Training, which in 2012 included more than 25,000 personnel from 22 nations, as well as 40 ships and submarines. It's hard to overestimate the amount of coordination that goes into these ship-to-shore deployments. In order to not create easy targets, AAVs and LCACs from multiple different vessels must hit the shore at the same time. That's why planes and helicopters will also be employed to provide constant information on both friendly and enemy troop movement. It's important to understand how much vulnerability exists when troops move from a seafaring vessel to the shore. All around the world, militaries have invested billions of dollars in developing vehicles to facilitate this process and training their troops on how to operate them. From the early landing vessels used in World War II to heavily armed and armored amphibious assault vehicles, speed and efficiency have remained constantly problematic. Fortunately, hovercrafts like the LCAC and the new SSC are making it easier than ever to ensure men, women, and vehicles can get their boots on the ground with as little risk as possible. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.